Hello! Today I'd like to share 10 tips that will help you better enjoy Starfield. Curse you! If you arrive at a new settlement, make sure you walk the streets. The game has randomly occurring conversations and announcements that you can overhear. Speak to everyone with a unique name too. They're interesting because they provide some flavour and backstory to the world, but they can also give you a side quest that you can do. The quests you'll get are the best way to get experience and level up early on. You also get quite a bit of money too. For example, I left New Atlantis with over 50,000 credits just from doing the side quests in the game. As a bonus, you also get a chance to admire the landscape and how the city has been put together. And there's some follow ones to those random interactions after some time, so keep an eye out for those when you come back. For example, when you first arrive at New Atlantis, you'll see a boy who seems to be orphaned. My parents aren't dead, they just took a different shuttle. He claims that his parents simply took another shuttle and are on the way, but you'll see him several times at different parts of the city as his mini side story develops. If you look at the skills, you'll notice that they have 4 levels, and the benefits within each skill get better the higher you go. At the same time, there's a lot of synergies between skills. For example, boxing and martial arts work well together to boost your unarmed fighting. Because many of the requirements to upgrade skills tend to be similar across these skills, you get the most benefit from choosing one style. Focusing on the skills that fit that style and concentrating on upgrading those skill levels will make combat a lot easier than spreading yourself too thin. You'll also find that skill points are often the bottleneck in upgrading skills, so make sure to save up some for the important skills. That doesn't mean that you can't use other weapons of course. I have no skills on rifles, but I still make use of sneak headshots from range. But if you're working towards upgrading a skill, it makes sense to focus on using it as much as possible. An extra tip is that you only need to finish enemies with a weapon if you have a kill requirement. So if you're trying to upgrade your boxing skill, you can still shoot enemies to weaken them, then finish them off with an uppercut. If you like sneaking around, then you should be aware that your companions affect your stealth. You might be perfectly hidden, but suddenly enemies start firing at your friend, or your friend starts firing just because you went into caution. One way to avoid this is to tell them to stay put before a section you want to stealth, then come back when you're done. But if you do take them, then you should be aware that your companions also have their own skills. For example, Andrea has 4 levels of stealth, and the Adoring Fan has 1 level of concealment. They're some of the better ones to take for stealth, while Vasco, the robot companion, is the worst. But keep in mind that companions can and will start firing, so the weapons also matter. Give them silenced weapons and some ammo for the weapon. They don't use up ammo, so you don't have to give them a lot, but giving them some seems to encourage them to use that weapon. This is not a game where you can stealth everything, but if you follow this advice, it should minimize how often your companions give you away. I'm hit. If you're interested in the manufacturing side of the game, the good news is that your extractors and manufacturers work automatically, so you can set them up and let them do their own thing while you do missions or explore the galaxy. When you come back, you'll have storage containers full of resources to use for whatever you want. But if you build outposts, make sure you optimize them. Instead of having to travel all over the galaxy to retrieve their goods, set up your outposts to deliver goods to a central location. Then that outpost can be your manufacturing base, where you have multiple chains of components being crafted. This is a bit trickier than it might seem at first, so I'm working on a step-by-step -step guide to setting up an automated resource gathering and delivery network that does this. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and like this video so you can see it when it comes out. When you're exploring a location in the wild, you'll sometimes hear a ship landing. Look around and see where it lands, because there will be an actual ship there. Sometimes they're colonists or friendly NPCs, but sometimes they're hostile. If they're enemies, you can kill the ones on the ground and then board the ship. Once you clear the enemies inside, you'll be able to sit in the pilot's seat and travel back to a friendly port. Then you can register the ship and either sell it for a bit of profit, or you can actually use it yourself and customize it however you want. Of course, you can also steal ships from friendly or neutral NPCs. Just be aware that this may tick off some of your crew. The next time we arrive in port, I am leaving. But the point is that those ships well are actually real, not just background right animations. What do you want from your...
When you're exploring a planet, you'll have to go into scan mode to scan minerals, plants and animals. But that's not the only use of scan vision. You can use it when you're exploring a hostile location to spot enemies. If you're in scan vision, they'll be highlighted and you can use this to see where they are and how many there are. That allows you to plan your approach. This method is particularly good if you get the ability to zoom by upgrading the surveying skill. Once the location is cleared, you can also use scan vision to help you loot faster. Items that you can pick up will be highlighted. It will also highlight all the junk too, but if you mouse over the item, you'll be able to see what it is before you pick it up. Crit sticks don't show the prompt to pick them up at the moment, but you can still pick them up. You also have to leave scan vision to open some cupboards and containers. But make sure to look out for magazines in particular. They give you a permanent bonus to your capabilities after you pick them up, so they're always good to have. You can't see the bonuses in the character sheet, but if you keep the magazines, you'll be able to review this whenever you need to. The medicine cabinets next to the ramp on some ships will refresh the contents every so often. Check them before you leave the ship. Some ships may not have cabinets, but this definitely happens with the starting ship. It's not a game changer, but it's a nice little extra bonus every so often. Make sure not to overlook food as a source of healing too. Unfortunately, food doesn't count against skill requirements to use healing items, but eating a lot of sandwiches will heal you quite a bit. I speak to your crew members regularly too. They often have random items that they'll give you. And an extra tip is to look out for emergency escape gates. You can cut the bolts to open them, and they often lead to extra items or hidden routes around the levels. When you sprint or jog while you're overloaded, you lose oxygen and eventually build up carbon dioxide. If your carbon dioxide maxes out, then you'll start losing health. But luckily you can't die from exhaustion, no matter how fat you are. So if you have to travel hundreds of meters back to your ship and you're overloaded, a good tip is to simply sprint back. Your health will drop like a stone, but you can sprint forever. Once you're back, just sleep for an hour and you'll be back to full health. The normal walking speed is also very slow, but when you're overloaded, you lose oxygen if you move faster than that. One little hack to move faster is to start auto-walking, then pull out your gun and aim down sights. You'll walk noticeably faster. I've timed it and it's basically twice as fast as the normal walking speed. There's an option under the accessibility settings to set iron sights to toggle. Turn that on when you're doing this to avoid having to hold the aim button down. So if you're overloaded, which is definitely going to happen in this game, and you can't afford to lose health, this is another little trick to move faster. Most ships have forward-facing weapons, so if you manage to get behind them and stay behind them, they'll usually have problems causing you damage. When you meet hostiles, divert power to your engines and use the boost feature to close the distance to the enemy ships. After you pass each other, manually slow down and turn towards them. On PC, you control speed with the W and S buttons. The reason is that slowing down helps you turn faster. So if you have a small ship, you should be able to get on their 6 and stay there. Adjust your speed as necessary to stay behind them, and you should have all the time in the world to take them down. There's a lot more to ship combat, especially if you're facing a lot of enemies, so you may have to adjust your approach. But a good principle to follow is that you want to focus on killing the weaker enemies first. Less enemy guns means less damage to you. Sleeping, even for an hour, will give you the well-rested bonus. That means an extra 10% more experience for the next 24 hours in the game. More experience means more level ups, more level ups means more skill points, and you need skill points to upgrade your skills. There's quite a lot of times, especially early, where you may have met the conditions to upgrade a skill, but you shorten skill points to actually upgrade them. Drinking tea also gives you an easy 2% more experience when you're handing in particularly important quests. Make sure that you're taking advantage of every XP bonus when you're completing quests. You may also want to save up some skill points so you can upgrade essential skills immediately. So there you go, that's 10 tips that I've found helpful while playing the game. I hope that they'll also help you as you enjoy Starfield. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.